I want to talk a little bit more about receptor types in general before we talk about the endocrine system and which of these types are most common in the endocrine system. So remember, receptors are necessary for a chemical messenger, which is also called a ligand, something that binds to a receptor. These are necessary for a chemical mess messenger to communicate. The receptor is the receiver. And yes, it's similar to the idea of a receptor in a, in a feedback pathway or a stimulus response pathway. Um, a protein receptor is a mechanism of detecting something. So there are three there's different ways to categorize receptors. Um, one, I'm going to categorize by membrane receptors. You saw these last week, very briefly. There's gonna be two types of those. That means that the signaling molecule, the chemical messenger or ligand binds to a membrane protein to have its effect. There's also a type of intracellular receptor. This means it's inside the cell. I will get into later this week types of hormones and which of these they use. To get into a cell, just a preview, a molecule has to be hydrophobic, right? It has to be able to pass through those hydrophobic tails of the phospholipid bilayer. So this pathway here is only going to be for hydrophobic molecules. It's gonna be for steroid hormones. I don't know why I got quieter, steroid hormones. So we'll see this, but I like to put this in these category, categories here. Um, okay, so membrane receptors are, are two types. I'm gonna list them here and I've got pictures that show them better. So one type is going to be a ligand gated or chemically gated ion channel. An ion channel that opens in response to something binding to it. Show a picture in a moment, super important. A big part of nervous system signaling. There are also G protein coupled receptors that use second messenger signaling. These are gonna be important for both endocrine and nervous systems. Then over here, we've got um, Intracellular receptors, they're called various things. Um, they're called intracellular receptors because they're really the only type. They're also called nuclear hormone receptors. And they will act as transcription factors to make new DNA. This is the one I'm not gonna show in this video. I've got a nice, um, images of, of it later, in a later lecture. Okay, last thing for this overview here, um, this is going to be so used in, to, for neural signaling, so neurons. This is also gonna be used for neurons. And then for our endocrine system, so these are the two that will be the focus this week are going to be these two. Hormones are going to use these two mechanisms, so endocrine signaling. Okay, I do want to show an overview of these two, these membrane receptors. Um, when we get to hormone video in a couple videos, I will then contrast these two. So we'll review G protein coupled again. So the chemically gated ion channels, also called ligand gated, also called channel-linked receptors. Don't love that term, but kind of makes sense. They're receptors, they're linked to channels. Um, they are going to come back to us in the nervous system. And the basic idea of them is the ligand binds to the protein. The ligand bound version is a different conformation. So when this chemical messenger or ligand binds, the channel opens, 
and ions are going to flow in into the cell or out depending on their gradient. So we, we will see this with the nervous system. Ions can't go through the plasma membrane, so they require a channel to go through. Some channels are open all the time, so leak channels. Some are chemically gated. Super important for nervous system signaling. We get to neurotransmitter effects is to know when this is gated and when they're open and why that matters. There are different channels specific to different ions and some that are more general for more than one ion. So like sodium, potassium, et cetera. So that is one type of I don't have, a membrane receptor, right? It's on the membrane. So for one cell to communicate to another. Another type of membrane receptor are these G protein coupled receptors. So here is our membrane receptor. You can tell because it's on the membrane. And in this case, this is a different mechanism. This is a more indirect mechanism than opening up an ion channel. In this case, we have a first messenger, um, something like epinephrine, that is a hormone produced by the adrenal gland. Epinephrine is not going to enter the cell. It's going to bind to this receptor on the plasma membrane. So epinephrine binds, that's step one. Step two, G protein is activated. There are cases where it's inactivated instead, but it's released and then does something else. This is a cascade. It's called it's a signaling cascade because we are sending the signal on down this cascade. The G protein is going to activate another enzyme, a, a protein, adenylate cyclase. Um, this is an enzyme that G protein activates. Adenylate cyclase is going to take ATP and convert it to cyclic AMP as well as some phosphate groups. So this conversion here, this is our second messenger. CAMP is inside the cell. It's the messenger that's inside the cell. So we're able to have the signal that was induced by the first messenger now inside the cell. CAMP is going to activate kinases. Put that here. What are kinases? Kinases are enzymes, so other proteins that phosphorylate other proteins. Oh my gosh. Um, I got a picture here that sometimes can help. Um, this maybe is a review from, uh, from these different enzymes. They either add or remove phosphate groups. We're going this way. So we're taking this inactive protein. Typically, it can actually do the opposite, but this is the general that an inactive protein can be phosphorylated. So a phosphate group is added, and now it's an active protein. This is what we're talking about here. So activated enzymes, other proteins that kinases activate other proteins, many enzymes. These proteins are gonna have various effects in the cell. That's basically what cell function is, is change in, in activity of proteins. So we could have increased um, glucose synthesis, increased ATP utilization, increased gene expression, various effects on the cell. Depending on what the messenger was and such. So we'll see examples of that. That is an overview of G protein coupled receptors um, linked to second messengers, a type of membrane protein. Again, you will see the intracellular proteins. It will be inside the cell um, in, a, in a later lecture coming up. Please do this learning check. So name each type of cell communication, A through E.